the NHS in England is short of 110,000 people uh, to get ourselves up with regard to doctors to the European average per head of population we need another 46 and a half thousand doctors so we're pretty stretched to begin with we've had two years of pandemic and folk are at breaking point the levels of stress the levels of violence against healthcare which is a marker of stress in the system the number of doctors taking early retirement because of stress because of the unfair pensions tax which kicks in particularly at the end of this month, the number of junior doctors graduating with £100,000 debt and finding that they'll never be able to service it and chucking medicine in the UK for elsewhere, we really are in dire position. But you know what? It's hard to know just what the real numbers are because you're... Your listeners probably won't believe this, but the biggest employer in the country does not do workforce planning in a formal fashion. And that's what this amendment that we're going to talk about this morning is all about. Let's touch on that then. So the, the peers have already in the, in the House of Lords have already suggested that there needs to be um, a, a change, certainly to this bill, which is back in the Commons on Wednesday this week. What is it that you're hoping MPs will support from what the peers have said? Well, the amendments we're talking about are to try and make the bill less bad. It's still the wrong bill at the wrong time. But specifically, amendment number 41, which we're talking about this morning, makes it a statutory duty on the government to do independent, verifiable workforce planning and stick it out in the public domain so that we know what we're dealing with. That just doesn't happen at present. Why is it not being being done? Is it, is it, is it so it makes it easier for, for government to, to fudge the figures? Um, it's the usual conspiracy or cock-up question. Um, it certainly makes it easier for the government to fudge the figures. We're so short of staff to maintain safe patient levels here. It's it's quite unbelievable. We're really calling on MPs to actually back this regardless of where they come from. We need safe staffing. We need to be able to staff our health and care wards. We need to be able to staff our acute services. Right now, we're operating in the dark. Are you hopeful that enough MPs on the government side will, will see what you would argue is sense here and, and defeat the government on what they would say is it's, it's an unnecessary part of what, what they're trying to get through. Well, I've worked in the NHS for more than 30 years. We deliver miracles on a daily basis, so I'm always hopeful. This amendment was supported overwhelmingly in the House of Lords. It'll be a really poor reflection on government MPs if they don't back it. It's about safe staffing in the NHS. What can be wrong with that? And we're, we're looking at another uptick in terms of hospital admissions for COVID at the moment. You know, just, just while we have you on that situation, certainly in London, what's the message you're getting? What are you hearing from staff on the front line? Well, I'm a consultant in acute medicine. On my clinical days for the past two years, I've seen nothing but COVID. We're admitting more COVID patients again just now. Um, we only had the word from Shanghai. Um, early this morning that they've now put themselves into an emergency lockdown position. I despair when I travel in London by tube. Nobody is wearing a mask. The government has shelved all responsibility here. And if we get a particularly toxic variant coming through, which is likely, some areas of the country, some areas of London have 30% of the population who haven't had the first vaccine. We're a breeding ground for new toxic variant. And if that happens with the current light touch public health uh, message coming from the government. We are totally, totally ruined. You'd like to see more measures implemented. You'd like to see us facing tougher restrictions again. I would like us to see face masks implemented in transport for London. It's always been a notional thing. It's never been properly enforced. And at present, I'm taking part in the minority sport when I put my mask on. If we don't get a sense of what we need to keep the NHS running at what is this critical time, how long do you think we, we've got for a health service before it becomes unsustainable? Or would you say we're already at that point? We've been running in string and ceiling wax for years. 40% of senior doctors are going to be forced to take early retirement in the next few months because of the pension tax or to reduce their clinical shifts. We've got 6.1 million people on waiting lists that will probably never deliver. And what does the government decide to do at this time? It decides that the best thing it can do for the health service is another top-down total reorganisation, one that you can see from outer space, to quote Andrew uh, Lansley 10 years later. We don't need a reconfiguration just now. We are at our limit and this is not going to help us.